Hi. Muslims do not believe the Bible is the inspired word of God. They claim to believe in the originals of at least certain books of the Bible, but at the same time they claim the Bible we possess today is a corrupt scripture altered by men. So what Islamic sources can we as Christians use to prove to Muslims the Bible is preserved and authoritative? In this video, I'll give you one of those sources and prepare you to deal with the usual Islamic apologetics Muslims use to reject the Bible. So here's the Islamic source. In Sunan Abu Dawood, Volume 5, Hadith number 4449, we read, It was narrated that Ibn Umar said, Some of the Jews came and called the Messenger of Allah, meaning Muhammad, to Al-Quf, and he came to them in their school. They said, O Abu al-Qasim, a man among us has committed zina, or fornication, with a woman, so passed judgment concerning them. They set out a cushion for the Messenger of Allah, and he sat on it. Then he said, Bring me the Torah. It was brought, and he took the cushion from beneath him, and placed the Torah on it, and said, I believe in you, and in the one who revealed you. Then he said, Bring me the most knowledgeable amongst you. And a young man was brought to him. And he mentioned the story of stoning, as mentioned in the Hadith of Malik from Nafi'. And this Hadith has been graded Hassan, or reliable. Notice here Muhammad, who lived in the 7th century, said he believed in the Torah. So you might think this narration is proof enough for Muslims that the Bible, or at least in this case, the Torah, is preserved and authoritative. Well, it's not as simple as that. First we need to look at the usual Islamic apologetics for this narration, and then refute them one by one. Recently on Twitter, I was communicating with Muslim apologist Ijaz Ahmed. He had recently made a video attacking the Bible. So here's how I confronted him. I said, Ijaz, you do realize your claims can easily be refuted simply by referring you back to the Qur'an and Ahadith. These are the narrations from Muhammad. If the Bible is corrupt, then that destroys the Qur'an also, as the Qur'an and Ahadith verifies the biblical scriptures of the 7th century, which we still have today. Ijaz responded with the usual Muslim response, claiming, Neither the Qur'an or Ahadith affirm the Bible as the Word of God. I then told Ijaz, Muhammad affirmed his belief in the Torah that existed in the 7th century. The Hadith is in Sunan Abu Dawood, graded Hassan or Reliable. You would need to prove the Torah got corrupted after that. Where is your proof? I provided Ijaz with that Islamic source, but he simply wasn't able to provide any proof the Torah was corrupted after the 7th century. So what I'll do here is show you the usual Muslim apologetics for this narration by displaying Ijaz Ahmed's claims and responses in our Twitter exchange. Ijaz and some other Muslim claimed that what Muhammad really meant was he believed in the original Torah only. Notice here Ijaz also adds, He, meaning Muhammad, believed in the Torah with respect to what God revealed. Now, these particular Muslim claims are easy to refute. The fact is, the word original nowhere appears in that narration. And when Ijaz says, with respect to what God revealed, his point is, as you see here, the context of the narration is about Rajam, or the punishment of stoning. Thus, his claim is, Muhammad was only affirming that legal ruling from the Torah, not the whole Torah. So here's how you refute a Muslim who claims that. Ask him, did Muhammad affirm his faith in the Torah, A, before or B, after the legal ruling of stoning was issued in that event? The answer is A. If Muhammad only believed in the legal ruling from the Torah, he would have verbally affirmed his faith in the Torah only after the legal ruling was read from it. Instead, what we saw in the narration was that Muhammad first affirmed his faith in the Torah before, not after, the legal ruling of stoning was issued. So this is proof that Muhammad believed in the complete Torah and not just a legal ruling. In fact, Ijaz's claim that Muhammad was only affirming the legal ruling of stoning and not the Torah itself is also refuted by asking this simple question. When Muhammad withdrew the cushion from beneath him, what did he place on it? A. A verse or portion of the Torah containing a legal ruling, or B. The Torah itself? The answer is B. Muhammad did not place on the cushion just a verse containing a legal ruling, but the Torah itself. 
he was giving honor and respect to the complete Torah. Yes, the context speaks of stoning, but notice I've already proved Muhammad affirmed his faith in the Torah, not only that specific ruling. So the context of this narration is about both the Torah and that legal ruling. Thus, the Muslim apologist is refuted. The last thing to mention about this legal ruling issue is about Ijaz's protest that if Muhammad was affirming his faith in the whole Torah, then all of the 613 mitzvot, or commandments, would have been endorsed in the Sharia, or Islamic law. And since they're not part of Islamic law, Ijaz therefore claims Muhammad was not affirming the whole Torah. My only response here would be to simply thank Ijaz, as he unknowingly exposed a major inconsistency of Muhammad. Muslims have a serious dilemma here because I've already proved from the hadith that, number one, Muhammad affirmed his faith in the complete Torah of the 7th century, and number two, then Muhammad also specifically affirmed the Torah's legal ruling on the punishment of stoning to death. We Christians also affirm the Torah is the word of God. However, we're not under Mosaic law, but under the law of Christ. Muhammad, on the other hand, affirmed and practiced a specific legal ruling from the Mosaic law. So, if he didn't affirm the rest of the Torah commandments, then I'll just leave that to the Muslims to figure out Muhammad's inconsistency on this matter. For me, it's more proof Muhammad was a false prophet. Now, another claim that Muslim apologists will make is that Muhammad was only being respectful and showing common decency to the Jews by calling their scripture the Torah, when actual fact it was simply a corrupt scripture which only the Jews referred to as the Torah. I respond to such a ridiculous claim by asking, Number one, was Muhammad lying when he called a corrupt scripture the Torah? Number two, why would Muhammad make a false affirmation of faith in a corrupt scripture and then comply with its legal ruling? Number three, Muhammad withdrew the cushion from beneath him to place the Torah on it. Is it logical, reasonable, and a display of good judgment for a true prophet to show such respect for a false, corrupt scripture? Number four, if Muhammad called a corrupt scripture the Torah, doesn't that mean Muhammad was a coward that couldn't stand up for the truth? If he were a true prophet, you would expect him to expose it as a false, corrupted scripture. And number five, Moses received the Torah from God, so if Muhammad called a corrupt scripture the Torah, then wasn't Muhammad disrespecting Moses and his Torah? So you can see how these questions easily refute the Muslim apologist who uses that ridiculous claim. Now, if you keep asking these kinds of pressing questions, you'll notice the Muslim apologist will, as a last resort, claim the hadith is weak, unattested, or unreliable. Or at least the portion of the hadith is claimed to be weak where Muhammad affirmed his faith in the Torah. As you see here, that's exactly what Ijaz Ahmad did. In fact, he seemed totally confused and couldn't decide on whether that portion of the hadith was Ahad, singularly attested, Da'if, weak, or Mardud, rejected. Actually, he couldn't even decide whether one portion, singular, or portions, plural, of the hadith were unreliable. Ijaz's indecisiveness and confusion here was a result of my hard-pressing questions on Muhammad's affirmation of faith in the Torah. Now, let's refute this particular Muslim claim. As we've seen already, the narration's chain of narrators is graded as hasan, which means good or reliable, according to the great hadith scholar Al-Albani. And the actual matan or text of this hadith is supported by the Qur'an itself, as the Qur'an also affirms the preservation and authority of the Bible. But that's a whole different topic. And if a Muslim claims that one of the men in the chain of narrators, Hisham ibn Sa'ad, is unreliable, well, that claim won't work either, because many hadith scholars consider him a reliable narrator, such as Abu Dawood, Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and, as I mentioned, Al-Albani also. Even the great hadith scholar Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani used this same hadith as a basis for his own opinion on what Muhammad meant when he affirmed his faith in the Torah. Lastly, even Ibn Kathir, the most famous Muslim commentator on the Qur'an, used this same hadith in his commentary. So, the Muslim apologist cannot claim this hadith is weak or rejected. Muhammad did indeed affirm his faith in the Torah. 
But even if we agree with Muslims, for argument's sake, that the part of the narration is weak where Muhammad spoke to the Torah, saying, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. As per the rest of the narration, we still read that Muhammad complied with a legal ruling, in this case stoning, to be implemented based on a supposedly corrupt scripture. Therefore, Muslims need to wake up and view such an argument as totally illogical, because even if you take out that part of the narration, you still end up with Muhammad believing in the Torah due to his approval and compliance with a legal ruling from it. In fact, you can also read other versions of this same narration for more proof of that. So either by word or action, both ways show Muhammad believed in the Torah. Case closed. Lastly, if you've enjoyed watching my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and prayerfully consider financially supporting my ministry to Muslims. There are two ways you can do that. To support my research videos and polemics against Islam, please see my Patreon page. Or if you'd like to support my education in Christian apologetics, please see my GoFundMe page. And pray that Muslims not only leave the false and dangerous religion of Islam, but also come to accept and know the way, the truth, and the life, the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask this from God our Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.